Calling your neighbor? A pretty easy task in this West African village. Calling the world? Not so much. Just ask United Methodist Communications consultant, Megan Orton. The major assumption is that everybody has a mobile phone. But in reality, there's a huge number of factors that impact the level of access that people have to mobile devices. First and foremost, it's gender. Does your wife have a phone? If she needs to use your phone, what does she do? Well, I don't do nothing. She does not, she can't have a phone. So if she needs to make a call, can she use the cell phone? Yes. Can she take it and go away? No, 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 no. <laughs> gender norms, gender roles, influence an individual's access to information, to mobile devices, and then also to the finances that help them to use those devices. So you, you have a cell phone. What do you use it for? Phone. Uh -huh. She cannot use messages, but she can. Why can't she use messages? Because I want to know. Cannot read. Uh -huh. There is no one list of the right technology. Every situation is different. By asking the right questions, mission partners can get an idea of what devices are appropriate, as well as identify existing roadblocks that could prevent the intended use. For instance, it simply wouldn't be pragmatic to provide these women with a microwave oven. By the same token, practicality plays an important role in choosing a phone, a computer, or any electronic device. It's a solar power light, but it needs some more charge. Is it durable enough for a rugged climate? How will it be used? Is it even needed? Sometimes the answers to these questions are surprising. There was a study that Harvard did with farmers in Kenya, and the farmers were given Android devices, but they weren't using them because their hands were dirty, so they were in the field and they felt like they were going to ruin them, but also they thought that they were televisions. So they actually put them up in a place of honor where a television goes, um, and they never use them. They never turn them on. Androids may not have worked in this instance, but a United Methodist communicator uses a state-of-the-art Android phone daily. But while it's the right tool in a business environment, it isn't a good choice for the more rural areas of his country. I think the major thing to be careful about with this one is if you are going to a place like we were yesterday, mm. don't take this phone. All right. Take this one. Okay. Even if you don't have the internet, okay. people will see you as the common man with this one. Oh. But when you take this one, yeah. people think you are a governor, yes. a president. You are very right. This one reduces barriers. Mm -hmm. This one brings them up. It's also good to understand that now mobile devices are the new the new business suit. So if you think of anyone that's been to different parts of Africa, you know that every pastor wears a suit. And that's a sign of status and a symbol of achievement. And now mobile phones are those status symbols. So if you have someone that is working at the community level and is supposed to be removing barriers between people of lower stature in terms of socioeconomic issues, that person's really flashy device might actually make them seem inaccessible to the very people that you're trying to improve service delivery for. The same communicator recently received a tablet computer, but it didn't take long to discover why this one wasn't the right choice. Even if someone were to repair it, something as simple as them opening it and replacing a battery is not possible without compromising the device. We were just in Liberia about two weeks ago and I went out with a tablet. We ended up breaking it in a day and a half and we didn't drop it. We simply got in a car and drove down a bumpy road. And the device isn't made for that. It needed to have a case, which was almost the same price as the device, and a protective shield on the cover, things like that. Questions to consider include, are devices you provide able to be serviced regionally? Can spare parts be obtained? Are they low power or able to operate through solar? Does operating the device seem intimidating? Is there confidence in the technology? What training is needed and under what conditions? In the majority of societies that we're working in, um, in the African context specifically, there's a lot of value in community. So if I'm ever training on a device, what I like to do is actually train in pairs. There was a training that I did in Malawi where the pastors asked specifically if they could bring, I think it was their wife and their child. The pastor, because he's a very important person, can't be seen to be unknowledgeable. He can't be seen to be the novice. And so he put them in front of him during the training. Hugely, hugely interesting. Um, so those individuals who are much more savvy receive the training. He went home at night, 
they actually trained him. He asked all the questions that he couldn't ask in front of me as a female trainer from outside. And he came back the next day and he was really savvy. Even getting equipment into the hands of your partners can be a challenge. If proper procedures aren't followed, there can be very high taxation on goods brought into a country. And power cords, adapters, and batteries are magnets for thieves. So procuring doubles is helpful because without spares, an expensive device can be rendered useless. The first piece of advice that I typically give partners is to bring some sort of an inventory. Understanding that in an airport scenario, your bag could be compromised at any time. I've had headphones stolen, I've had microphones stolen. Electronics are more attractive than anything right now in the developing country context. So you need to figure out if that risk is worthwhile or if it should be shipped separately through something like DHL. There's no question that technology provides avenues to better health, education, and prosperity. But by making an effort to investigate the right technology in the right context, you can have an even greater impact.